we get started with part two of my cycle process, I just want to take a minute and thank everyone for all their help in answering my questions and supporting me and guiding me through the process of this reef build. Um, I can't uh, thank you guys enough, both on uh, YouTube and Reef Central. Um, you know, I was thinking back, uh, going back to grade school, if you remember the two or three kids in the classroom that uh, consistently would frantically raise their hand and stretch their arm up into the sky hoping that the teacher would call upon them when the teacher asks a question. Well those kids ended up being reefers because uh, that's how I feel. I feel I could put a question out there and uh, a lot of you jump right on there and, and, and answer the questions and, and really support me and, and uh, you know help me out with this uh, whole process. And you're also helping out all the people that are watching who are contemplating getting into the or getting into the hobby or getting back into the hobby uh, because we're you know posting the questions and posting the answers so I just want to take a minute and thank all of you for for all your support all right so let's go ahead and get started with uh, part two hey guys we're at uh, day 19 just looking in the tank and saw a uh, little critter. Hopefully we'll be able to see him. But he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Never mind. All right, guys. We're on day 20 here. Just did a water test. The ammonia is uh, still detecting below 0.25. It looks like the nitrite is backed off from the last test we did and it's looking like maybe 0.5 ppm and the uh, nitrates looking to still be around 10 to 20 ppm this tank is really starting to take off as far as a little life it starts within the tank itself on the glass, all over the glass, there are these little mini starfish as well as um, some kind of pod that uh, latches onto the glass for a second and then lets go and uh, let, allows the current to take it away. Um, really hard to see with this. All that white stuff in there, uh, a lot of it are these little creatures that are being stirred up by the pumps. So very cool. Um, Really happy, really excited. Just kind of pan around the tank for a little bit. So that's day 20 right now. We're still day 20 here. I just uh, left my local fish store. I went there to purchase some live rock to seed the system here. Um, I picked out the rock, they bagged it, and I paid for it, and I ended up returning it because I chickened out. I didn't want to uh, put it in my system. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I purchased uh, about 75 pounds of dry reef saver rock from Bulk Reef Supply. And I did that because I didn't want to have any issues with um, nuisance hitchhikers that can eventually take over the tank if I don't take care of it. And because I'm so new, I, I don't know how I would even handle that right now. Um, obviously, if it happened, I would... Uh, do a lot of research and try to figure out how to get rid of it but I think it's safe to start off with the dry rock for someone like me who's brand new um, and the other reason was because the live rock at the store they had it in the fish tank and it was really cloudy water it was really hard to look at and inspect so uh, I, I started having second thoughts for that reason as well and the third reason probably the biggest reason is because I, I don't know what I'm doing I don't know how to inspect a rock. I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, they all have like little weird things on them, but um, which ones are bad, which ones are good, I, I don't know that yet. So rather than messing around with, um, or taking chances and putting that stuff in my tank, I opted not to do that. I did, however, and I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but I did, however, put some uh, live rock with coralline algae on it. There's about four little pieces. Um, and the reason I did that was because I figured, well, these are really small pieces of rock. They came from a different tank that was clear. And I didn't see anything on them that looked like 
it was growing besides the Coraline. And so I, I picked them out thinking that my chances of having something bad on them were minimal. And they had the Coraline algae, which I know could be beneficial later down the line. So that's why I bought those. I know, I can contradict myself just a little bit there, but I think you guys could completely understand where I'm coming from. Um, you know, these little buggers, these little critters that are emerging in my system come and go so quickly. Um, last night, um, I had what I believe was a, let me see if I can say this right, stomatella, a stomatella, it looked like a, basically looked like a, a slug crossed with a, like a roly poly or something, and it's always on this rock right here. And it only comes out at night, and I thought I had them last night, but... He, uh... Hey guys, it's uh, day 22. Just got home from work, and turned on the lights real quick. Just want to show you what these little guys are right here, all over my glass. Um, let's check them out, they're all moving around. I don't know what they are, I'm sure somebody out there knows what they are. These are not the little mini starfish, though. These are moving around quite rapidly. They look like they have little tiny tails on them. Yeah, they're just cruising around the tank there. So I, I like turning on the lights uh, during the middle of the night or uh, using my flashlight to check out what kind of critters I have in this tank. But we'll just kind of scan around, see what else we can find. And a small cluster of uh, mini starfish here. Hey guys, day 23, it's really late at night, um, but I got up, used my flashlight, and found this stomatola thing that I think is a stomatola. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but uh, it's pretty cool, man. Just cruising around on the glass. He's really shy about the light. i get him over here. Anyway, I don't want to bore you guys too much. It's just a basically a sluggy thing cruising around the tank. Day 23. Okay, we are on day 24 of the cycle. Things are looking really good. Um, those mini starfish are really just exploding in population. They're all over my glass, on the back of the glass, and even on the uh, weir of the uh, overflow. Did some tests. The ammonias are zero. If you remember the nitrites went from five and then down to 0.5 and now they're at zero. The shade of blue indicating zero so that's great. And then the nitrates are about five ppm which is also good. Um, so it looks like the cycle is completed based on this single test here. To make sure that it is complete, I'm going to go ahead and continue testing for maybe another five days. If the water parameters stay the same, then I'll go ahead and do my first 25% water change. Um, I also installed the peristaltic pumps there. They're going to be my dosing pumps. One's for calcium and the other one for alkalinity. They're not connected. They won't be connected for a good while. Um, I don't have to worry about that until I start getting corals that are going to be using up both calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Um, I'm using the Weep Keeper power strips channels four on each for the calcium and the alkalinity. The reason I'm using channels four is because for some reason the middle channels um, they don't pick up any kind of equipment with low voltage and they could actually uh, get stuck on because of the low amp amperage or whatever you want to call it wattage that's putting out can keep the smaller appliances or pieces of equipment running even though it's supposed to be off. So state uh, channels 1 and channels 4 don't do that. If you wanted to use channels 2 and 3 to run something with low wattage 
then you would have to buy an adapter, um, like a GFI type of adapter to, to make it so that it would stop when it's supposed to. And I'll be doing a separate video on the dosing pumps and how I hooked it up to the reef keeper and how I programmed everything. So that will be coming out in the next few weeks or so. Okay, I wanted to get a shot of the Ketomorpha. I haven't been paying much attention to it, but I'm pretty sure it's grown since I've purchased it. It's a small piece as it is, but I want to get a shot of it so we can compare its size uh, later down the road to see how much growth it's uh, had. If you remember, the refugium area has miracle mud in it. So that's what I'm running in there. And also the uh, mini starfish have made it into the sump area or the refugium area and they're stuck on the glass here. So I thought that was pretty cool too. So that'll conclude day 24. Alright guys, it's day 26. I have to be quiet because the wife's sleeping. I apologize for the dark video but I'll show you why it's dark. There's this little rock on the sand bed that when I shine the light on it, it starts glowing green. I want to see if you guys know what this is. No joke, it's a, it's a rock and it's glowing green when I shine light on it. Um, watch what happens. It's on the sand bed. Now watch the green. Crap, can't see it. Day 27, the ammonia and nitrites have been at zero for about four, four or five days or so. So I'm going to go ahead and do a first water change today. I'm going to do 25% water change. Um, I placed that mystery rock right in my reef. Let's see, where is it? It's right there. It kind of glows in the dark, glows green. I took it to my LFS today and they don't know what it is. I posted it on Reef Central and no one there knows what it is. So I'm just going to keep it in there and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this 25% water change. All right, before we do the water change, I want to show you guys what this rock does. All right, so here's that mysterious rock from last night. It's uh, just a basic rock. Um, here's a size comparison. You can see it uh, looks like a maybe it's like hardened sand or something but I'm gonna take it into the closet and shine a light on it and watch what happens All right so there's a the rock I'm shining a flashlight and I'll turn off the flashlight and check this out look at that thing it's just glowing green what do you guys make of this It like absorbs the light and then when the light goes off look at that. Isn't that crazy? Let me know what you guys think of that. Alright, I have the siphon in. The siphon line runs outside to the faucet. I'll just go ahead and crank that on. The water coming in. We are siphoning water out. So I'll do about 25% water change and then uh, see what that looks like. Alright, that's roughly about 25%. I'm estimating the sump is 25 gallons, so um, I'm going to fill up the tank with some fresh salt water. Alright, so here's my two containers of water. This one on the left that I'm showing you now is the salt water. The one on the right is just pure RODI water. And here is the RODI system. So what I'm going to do is uh, attach the three quarter inch hose to this. It's a real 2500 pump. Put that bad boy in there. Attach the other end. Place that in the container. Turn on the power. And then uh, fill up a few of these five gallon jugs and haul them upstairs. A lot of fun. Alright, since I'm doing the water change, I'm also changing out my media bags. I have two media bags filled with the Premium Rocks 0.8 carbon from uh, Bulk Reef Supply. And this is the GFO I'm running also. And one more thing, as far as the salt goes, I'm using the Aqua Vitro 
salinity, in case you guys are wondering. But uh, the tank's filled up, it's just a little cloudy, just changing out some media, and uh, we're almost done. Here's a system with the newly added salt water to it. It's a little bit cloudy, but that'll settle down. My pH is reading 8.22, which is great because before I did the water change, it was 8.15. So I'm really happy with the salt mix I'm using. I'm considering the cycle to be over since the nitrites and ammonia have been down to zero and have not spiked. I'll be gone during the month of November. My buddy will come over and make sure that the auto top off water is full and do minor maintenance to it, scrubbing the glass and whatnot. So that's good because it'll give the tank another month to mature without me screwing around with it and or adding any more livestock to it. The first uh, pieces of livestock that I do plan to add is going to be some reef cleaners. So I'll order that when I get back. If you guys have any comments, any questions, or any advice, please note them down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.